Hey guys, you asked and I heard you loud and clear. You want a Gashoth Sons Ava- <clears throat> Excuse me, I have no idea what happened there. Anyway, Commander Deck Tech, go! First off, let's take a look at our commander. Gashoth Sons Avatar. Don't say you didn't see that coming. You saw the thumbnail. I know you did. Anyway, Gashoth is a 7-6 for 5 red-green-white with trample, vigilance, and haste. Not a cheap commander, but we want to play dinos, so we don't care. The real reason we are playing Gashoth is that second ability. Whenever it does combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library and put any number of dinos revealed that way onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Now that we are all on the same page, let's get into the 99. We have a lot to cover, so keep up. Starting off light with our artifacts, we have Prying Blade to help us ramp with extra mana from treasure. Vanquisher's Banner is here to save the day, at least for those creatures that are at risk of losing in combat. Bonus is that it also helps you keep your hand full, because you'll be casting a lot of creatures. Cobbled Wings is hilarious. Just picture the biggest, dumbest dinosaur hanging from that little kite. And of course, since we're playing Commander, we have a Soul Ring. Next up we have Sorceries, most of which were chosen to make life difficult for your opponents. We have Emergent Growth, Hunt the Weak, and Mutiny to annoy your opponents, Legion's Judgment to deal with their biggest threat, and Thunderherd Migration to help fix your mana. We have a couple enchantments, Baffling End, Ixalan's Binding, Luminous Bonds, and Pious Interdiction to deal with opponents' threats, New Horizons to ramp and buff a creature, and Telenali's Crown to help trigger and rage, as well as make sure your creature doesn't forget about Arm Day. For instance, we have Crash the Ramparts and Sure Strike to help make combat math tricky, Crushing Canopy and Divine Verdict to deal with annoying flyers or any creature that are stopping you from getting your commander from smashing face, Lightning Strike, Slash of Talons, and Unfriendly Fire to finish off the last couple points of damage needed to kill blockers with big butts, and Pounce, because that's what raptors do. Let's be honest with each other, all the other parts of the deck are nice, but we are here for one thing and one thing only. Dinos. We'll start with white creatures, and we're gonna have to start off with a couple humans before making our way into the big boys. Kinjali's Collar to help make our dinos cheaper. Imperial Lancer for an early board presence while also giving us value when we start having dinos in play. Four white dinos, we have Looming Altasaur, Raptor Companion, Bellowing Aegisaur, Sun Crested Pterodon, Territorial Hammer Skull, Trap Jaw Tyrant, and finishing off with Zatalpa Primal Dawn. Red creatures also include a human or two before we get into the main attraction. Forerunner of the Empire to help tutor for the right dino and trigger and rage. Otepec Huntmaster to again help make our dinos cheaper and give them haste. Tillinali's Knight for a bear with upside. Sun Collared Raptor and Frenzied Raptor so you can have 8 power on turn 4. Thrash Raptors will be 5 3 most of the time. Sun Crowned Hunters can take a punch and still give a decent one back. Frilled Death Spitter will make your opponent think twice about blocking with their 1 1s. Needletooth Raptor is a little off curve, but its enraged trigger is hard to ignore. Be honest. Would you attack in knowing even with first strike your creature would die to a 2 2? Didn't think so. Charging Monster Sword because of 5-5 with Trample and Haste for 5 mana is impossible to not include. Silverclad Ferocidons is an insurance policy. And Itali Primal Storm is an amazing way to both mill and get extra value out of your opponent's library. For green creatures, we have Drover of the Mighty for Ramp. Wayward Swordtooth to help play as many land as you can. You'll be getting the City's Blessing pretty easily, so it'll be a 5-5 in no time. Arazka Frillback is hard to ignore with so much power for such a minimal investment. Grazing Whiptail helps keep Flyers at bay. Spike-tailed Ceratops to keep your opponents from attacking with a wall of tokens. Overgrown Armasaur, Ripjaw Raptor, and Snapping Sailback to take advantage if your opponent decides to attack or block. Thundering Spineback to buff your dinosaurs and make new ones late game. Polyraptor can get out of control, especially with Forerunner of the Empire. Colossal Dreadmob because why not? And finally, Galta Primal Hunger, which more often than not will be a 12-12 for double green. We have some gold creatures, starting with humans and ending with an awesome dino. Atsakan Seer for color fixing and late game recursion. Sky Terror is probably the most fearful thing in the sky. A 2-2 flyer with menace means it will get through most of the time. Regisaur Alpha to give everything haste and get a 3-3 that can immediately attack in is pretty great. And of course, Sakama Primal Calamity because who doesn't like getting a 9-9 with Vigilance, Reach, and Trample for free? Our land base is pretty simple since we're only in three colors and most creatures in the deck are only a single color. Keeping with the mostly Ixalan theme, we have Rootbound Crag and Sunpile Grove for duels, Unclaimed Territory and Unknown Shores for color fixing, adding in a Command Tower because, well, this is Commander, and then top it all off with 13 Forests, 11 Mountains, and 9 Plains, and there we have it. One Dino Stompy Commander deck. 
Since about 99% of all dinos are from Ixalan block, this deck was built with the idea that it can easily be converted into a brawl deck. That being said, if you really want to spend more than $75, there are some upgrades that can be made. Urza's Incubator and Quicksilver Amulet are good to help get the bigger dinos onto the battlefield faster. Hotly, Warrior Poet, and Carnage Tyrant don't need an intro or an explanation. Coat of Arms gives great value for going all in on dinos. Mirari's Wake buffs your dinos and helps you ramp into bigger and more badass dinos. When it comes to mana, there are plenty of options for upgrades. If money is no object, you could upgrade to the original dual lands, but if you can do that, you're probably playing Legacy. If you aren't in that group and you don't care about keeping the mana base brawl legal, then you can easily include all the relevant expeditions and BFC check lands. Other land options are Cavern of Souls and Ancient Ziggurat, and if you really want to take advantage of Gishoth's ability, you can always throw in a Rogue's Passage or Whisper Silk Cloak. If you were looking to change this over to a brawl deck, keep watching this channel. You could even subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified as soon as it comes out. If you like this video and you want to help out the channel, please like, comment, and share. We'll see you next time.